There's so many unique and unconventional things about Japanese fiction books. Guys, if I start with a list of, you know, the attributes which I like about Japanese fiction books, Japanese novels, then we'd be sitting here for a couple of hours and I still wouldn't stop waxing eloquently on Japanese books. But today I'd like to specifically talk about one attribute which has really fascinated me about Japanese fiction books and that is uh, the fact that you would find perhaps, you know, in no other language would you find a, a whole genre of books exclusively uh, dedicated to uh, bookstores. So in fact, there's a Japanese word for it. I cannot remember the word at the moment, but there's an entire genre that is dedicated, dedicated to bookstore books in Japan. Uh, that is, you know, novels whose setting is within a bookstore and where, you know, there's some kind of a story taking place either uh, where the bookstore is the main setting or the protagonists are, you know, somehow connected uh, to the bookstore and their lives, you know, revolve around a quirky little bookshop. You would find so many, uh, you know, of these kinds of books in uh, Japanese contemporary fiction. Uh, it, it's really fascinating. Uh, because as an Indian reader, I, I haven't seen, you know, I haven't come across uh, such a huge number of books in the Indian context, you know, in the context of Indian English or even in, in the context of, you know, books uh, being written in many other parts of the world where, you know, there's so much of fascination with the sheer art and craft of reading books that uh, multiple tales have been, you know, woven around the simple art and craft of reading books. So uh, today I want to review one such book and this book is, it's one of my favorite uh, Japanese fiction books now, A Gem of a Book and it's called More Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. So I'm going to review More Days at the Morisaki Bookshop by uh, Satoshi Yagisawa. So guys, I really don't want to give a spoiler by narrating the plot of the book. I've realized, you know, what I really do in a lot of book reviews is uh, give you, indirectly give you some sort of a summary that can be a spoiler for those of you who look forward to reading the book and who haven't read the book as yet. Uh, so from now onwards, I am going to refrain from doing that. So just in brief, my impressions about the book and why you should read this book, but nothing really uh, much about the plot I am going to review. So More Days at the Morisaki Bookshop is actually uh, a sequel to another book which is also describing certain events in this fictionary imaginary place called Morisaki Bookshop. Uh, now this Morisaki Bookshop is set in a small neighborhood uh, in Tokyo. And you know, it's one of those quirky bookshops specializing, dealing in selling secondhand books. And uh, also its main USP is that this bookshop uh, deals in selling rare books, you know, the rarest of those rare books, which you cannot find anywhere else. So you can find those at the Morisaki uh, bookshop. So the Morisaki bookshop is the main setting of this book and the lives of the protagonists revolve around this bookshop. Now, the main protagonist of this book is uh, Takako, who is a young uh, Japanese woman. I mean, her a exact age group is not given, but she seems like a young Japanese woman in her uh, 20s who is living in the bookshop I, I suppose she doesn't have anywhere else to live currently so she's living in this bookshop uh, which is run by her uncle whose name is Satoru I believe uh, so the uh, Takako is the main protagonist of this uh, story you know and uh, Takako's love life uh, her relationship uh, with her boyfriend her relationship with her peers where she you know her dy the dynamics of her uh, interactions and relationships with her peers, those, you know, wherever she works, at the office, wherever she goes. Uh, it's interesting how, you know, you see everything, how everything in the book is portrayed through the prism of her love for books. Uh, uh, Takako is so deeply passionate about books that she's, you know, literally consumed by her love and fervor for books. Uh, so much uh, so that her colleagues and a lot of people in her lives, you know, think of her as a somewhat odd for a young person because the general perception is, you know, that as a young person in Tokyo, she's supposed to be hanging out with people, you know, she's supposed to be a lively exuberant and going to parties and just having a good time in general. Uh, but Takago seems to uh, Takago seems too sober for a person of her uh, age group, and that's why uh, she comes across as a puzzle, you know, in her 
a very sober and kind of mellow down attitude and her very you know sort of she's very sensitive and reflective which kind of comes uh, across as weird to a lot of people her age group who are supposed i suppose more exuberant and outgoing so it's it's also I think in in a certain way it's also a certain kind of stereotyping of book lovers you know that book lovers have to be a certain way uh, so this is something which i found very cliched about the book and this you find this you know in a lot of uh, not just in books but you know in a lot of different kinds of uh, it's a mindset thing also i think you know as a writer i have come across this that people often think that people who read a lot of books book lovers or writers are generally very serious kind of people who don't socialize who don't party you know who are always uh, within themselves and brooding so to a certain extent the book you know kind of uh, propagates those stereotypes in its sketching of the main, main protagonist takako as a book lover but you know you can ignore i think once you ignore this those anomalies it's a beautiful book i wouldn't say it's a path breaking book uh, the uh, i've read another book uh, you know which is sort of comparable in the theme which is also about a bookstore the cat who saved uh, books which is also a japanese fiction book translated in english i forgetting the name of the author and i dare not pronounce the uh, pronounce the name wrong so i would not name the author but the cat who saved books you know was a very uh so sort of at the level of story i think it was better than this particular book you know there was a lot of intricacies involved in the plot and there was a lot of fantasy and magic realism so compared to that kind of book this book is a more like you know simple story telling very simple very emotional and heartfelt but there not too many uh you won't find any fantasy or magic realism kind of stuff here which is very very uh, typical to a lot of japanese fiction this book is more in the realist mode there's a very heartwarming account of the dynamics of uh, you know the relationship between uh, this young woman takako and her uncle satoru who uh, runs the bookshop and who's absolutely in love uh, with the books and how despite their age differences you know they unified uh by that kind of uh the unified by that kind of love and passion uh, for book so it's the book is you know uh, the setting is not the bookstore the bookstore is not the setting all the times the protagonist go to different places uh, but the interesting thing about this book is that you know it gives you a peep into the intimate world view of book lovers and it constructs a if you can call it a genre of book lovers you know that how do book lovers behaves and what you know kind of what are the things that motivate book lovers so it creates a folklore around book lovers so in that sense i find it very interesting uh, and fascinating and you know then this is a uh, this is a typical japanese trope again which you would find in a lot of J- uh, japanese fiction books that there's a young person uh, you know getting connected uh, to their roots again in the form of a bookstore whether their grandfather or you know it's an uncle uh, so this trope is always there you know whether it's a female or a male there's always a young protagonist and Uh, you know there's some kind of an elderly presence who is giving some kind of wisdom to them and teaching them about life so in this case the young protagonist is this young woman and her uncle uh, satoru uh, satoru is there and the other kinds of you know people she uh, meets at the bookshop so i guess it's also uh, some kind of uh, you know uh, the wisdom of old japanese folklore which we can find in or uh, more is at the morisaki bookshop as well uh, this kind of uh, you know this whole thing i i don't know about the context of these books but i'm just guessing you know that just like uh, so many countries across the world just like india is getting westernized and young people are increasingly getting disconnected from their roots and you know uh, are coming into contact with consumer culture and you know the slowness is somehow the whole feeling or uh, that slow joy of sitting and sipping a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or interacting with your loved ones or you know having meaningful conversations it's taking a back seat uh, similarly maybe a similar thing is happening in you know japan as well which is far more developed you know in india than india so i i'm guessing you know the onslaught of consumer culture is even uh far more harsh over there so perhaps these books are also constructing you know some kind of a nostalgic uh, scenario to return a much more simpler world where emotions are appreciated and where people are connecting more organically and emotionally rather than at a superficial uh, consumerist level so i see that as a parallel theme in a lot of these books about bookstores and i see similar kind of thing happening in mori saki bookshop mori is at the mori saki bookshop as well uh, so guys i totally recommend this book like i said it's not uh, an un- like it's not 
I wouldn't say that it's one, it's the best book in this genre, but it's definitely a great one-time read. More days at the Morisaki uh, bookshop. It's emotionally the storytelling is simple, uh, but it's you know the it's emotionally quite compelling. I found it to be emotionally very compelling. So if you're a lover of Japanese fiction and Japanese books, you could definitely try out More Days at the Mori Saki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagisawa. Guys, I'm really sorry if I mispronounced the name of the protagonist or any other names. You know, I'm really bad with Japanese names at the moment. So guys, if you like the video, please do press the like button and please do subscribe to the channel if you like my videos, if you like my... Uh, if you like my content, thank you so much for listening. Bye for now.